2 Thessalonians, the third chapter, verse number 3, 4, and 5, and then we'll go to 10 through 14 like I had on that original sheet. But now watch it. I've been talking about, oh, there it is. I've been talking about, let's just leave that up there. I've been talking about the last days, all the stuff that's going on, all the evilness around on every hand, the people that don't love God, with their lifestyles and the way they've been living. And, and the Lord said, know this, know this, that in the last days, these people would be there. They'd be, they, they love their own self, love their own self more than they love me. They, they, they love their own self anyway. They, they're disrespectful of the people around them. They want self-centered what they want. Their boasters are proud. They're blasphemers. They're disobedient to parents. They're unthankful. And, and they're, they're false accusers. They're truth breakers. They're despisers of those which are good. They're trading heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And, and they deny the power of God. Uh, have a form of godliness, but deny the power of God. He said, promise us turn away. And then he talked about the coming of the Lord when he's coming back to this earth and he's going to gather us together. And he said, don't be soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit or by any means. And, and the Lord is coming, but he did say there's going to be a falling away, a big falling away. And, and you know, I, and I talked about revelations, how that people get lukewarm, their experience get lukewarm, and the Lord said, I would, is your heart or cold? And you say now because I'm rich and you're Christian goods and I don't have need of nothing? You know what the Lord said about him? He, he said, first of all, he said, I'd rather be lukewarm. I mean, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'd rather be cold or hot, on fire or either, you know, just cold. And all. But he said, if you're lukewarm, and, and he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth, and now you've got everything. It seemed like everything on a silver platter, and you got plenty of money, and everything's fine to you. you got good insurance and all, whatever. You don't have need of nothing. You know what he said? Thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's what God had to say to the church in these last days. And then he, then he talked about, now listen to this. He said, he said, because straight is the gate, this is what Jesus said, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And I never emphasize this, got to go in there very much. That leadeth un, unto life. Now listen it. And few there be that find it. And he said, many uh, are on that broad road. When you read all the scripture there that Jesus was referring about the straight gate. And narrow is the way. How many of y'all heard that all your life? You know, the way is narrow. And sometimes rough, isn't it? Sometimes there's a rocky road. Sometimes it's not a pleasant road. But it's, it's, it's straight as the gate. It's a straight gate. And narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And listen it. And few there be that find it. See, God didn't say everybody that cries Lord, Lord is going to enter there. But on the contrary, he thought, different than that. You know, he said, why call me my Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I tell you to do? And how many of you know, if he said it in his word, that's what he expects us to live by and do. Okay? If he said it in his word, that's what he, that's what he expects. And he said, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, and few there be to find it. And then he said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Y'all read it? And many there be on that broad way. You know, so if you're with many people, and the people that are just doing what feels good. You know, a long time ago, Flip Wilson on TV, didn't he say, and he's the one that said, if it feels good, do it. How many of you know most of the time, you better do just, in fact, the one that said it. Y'all don't remember? Anybody remember if it feels good, do it? I think it's Flip Wilson, wasn't it? Don't matter if it was flip or flop. It don't matter. But but anyway, it was a flop because it's not the truth. Just because it feels good, you ought not do it. Sometimes it feels good to run somebody else's road. Sometimes it feels good to grab somebody by their neck. I had a preacher one time. Well, in fact, I mentioned him here a while. It's Marvin Mormon. I was set five years ago. And the man just said, sometimes you want to shake people till the liver quivers. He leaned over me and he said, no, until it quits quiver. You want to hang on to it till they're gone, you know, till they're out there. Sometimes it feels good to slap somebody right between the ears or eyes or wherever you slap them, wouldn't it? Sometimes it, sometimes it feels good to get back at somebody, wouldn't it? It feels good to pop some off, straighten them out, wouldn't it? But few to be to find the way the Lord wants us to handle life and do it. But broad is that way that leads to destruction. But marriage is the way. 
and few to be defined. Now watch this. And this came, this was wrote down here, and I go, where'd that come from? And I looked, and I even, I even talked to my search of scripture in my Bible program, and it wouldn't pull it up. And then I looked on it, and I said, well, I'm going to look at Thessalonians 6, because I know I read it, I don't know why it's in my note. But right under that, it said this, but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. How many of you know the Lord can keep you? His keeping power can keep us. And this old present, evil, ungodly world that we're living in. And we ought, we ought to be thankful for it. And, and look at the rest of it now. Look at verse, I, I like this, verse 4. And it says, and we have confidence. Paul was talking in the Lord touching you. How many of you know um, that we can have confidence in our brothers and sisters in the Lord? And we can pray for them and believe God with them. And, and he said, we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will to do. How many of you know that will to do is a big thing, too, but we, we won't go there right now. The will to do it. And God has the performance for us if we'll trust on him, depend on him, his grace and his goodness. But watch it. He said, we have confidence in the Lord touching you that you both do and will to do the things which we suggest that you ought to do. He said, command to do. How many of you know there are certain things? You're in the Lord's army, and when you're in an army, sometimes there's commandments given. Okay? Well, the commander-in-chief may say something. And how many of y'all do know our great commander-in-chief, and I say this with respect, but I don't mean disrespect in any way, is the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is the word. And if his word says it, then it's forever settled in heaven, and we ought to obey it. We ought to Amen. keep it. Amen? Now, now, we, you can't do that on your own or in the flesh. You sure need to be in the spirit and walk after the spirit and not after the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. If you don't watch out if you're in the flesh, you'll be doing everything old flesh wants you to do. And you'll fulfill those lusts and all. Because all that stuff is inside of us, amen? And, and y'all know the reason why, and we won't go there this morning. But now watch this. Now verse 5. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God. And listen to this. And this never, I never even thought of this. And into the patient waiting for Christ. How many of you know it takes patience sometimes? Have you ever had to have patience when you were a kid waiting for your Christmas that you wanted? Can you understand that? Having patience to wait? Have you ever been trying to buy a new car somewhere? And it take, have you ever understood? Now, it don't always do this, but have you ever understood sometime if you went to buy a new car, it takes them three hours to fill the paperwork out? <laughs> Any, anybody experience what I'm talking about? Three or four hours sometimes. Buying a new car, and it takes them three or four hours to print all that mess out, especially if you're getting financing. Now, I know some of y'all say, well, I'll pay cash for it. Well, good. Praise God. Next time I, I want to buy one, I'll get you to come pay cash for mine, and then I'll get out of there quicker. Oh, you, you, you meant for yourself, not somebody else. No, I, I, I'm cutting up with you. But how many of you know we have need of patience? Come on. We have need of patience. And how many of you know there's another scripture that says over here, I believe it's in James, that says what works patience. Anybody know what it is that works patience sometimes? Tribulation, Tribulation sometimes. Sometimes there's problems, things to deal with, things to go through. Come on. Sometimes there's a fiery furnace. Come on. Sometimes the army's behind you coming and there's a sea in front of you. You need to get over to the other side. Sometimes, come on. Sometimes there's a lion's den around the corner. Come on. And, and, and sometimes we just want things to happen. We want to mature. We want everything to go well real quick. It's real fast. But, but let, 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 look at that again. And he says, I want the Lord to direct your hearts and into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. And you know, there's a, Paul said to some people in, in one place, he said, you didn't run well, but what did hinder you or who did hinder you? Did you know we don't watch out if we're running with the wrong crowd sometimes? That crowd can influence us the wrong way. Who, he said, who did hinder you? You did run well, but who did hinder you? And if we don't watch out, you know, we get impatient, and we, we, we quit looking for Jesus to come. We quit expecting Jesus to come just any time, and we just get impatient. 
with how things are going, and, and, and we just want to go out. I, I, want, I want to have a good time. I want to kick my heels up. I want to have fun. Have, have you ever really kind of thought that a little bit? You want to kick it up? You want to have fun? And other people in the world are having a blast, and here you are bored still? Can't do anything? Can't? I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, you know, I, I will tell you, I missed out on a lot of things. I missed out on hangovers. I missed out on AIDS. I missed out on stomach disorder. I missed out on kidney disease and bladder disease. I, you know, I missed a lot of things in my life. And I, you don't know it, but I had a drug problem when I was a kid. <laughs> my mom and dad drug me in church. <laughs> That's a drug problem I had. And I'm not better than anybody else. I don't want anybody to feel bad. Praise God for you that's had bad past. How many of y'all are thankful that you're not, his past is gone. It's prior to now. You're not there anymore. But don't, you know, don't get, don't get impatient and lose your patience while you're waiting on the coming of the Lord in these last days. Because he's coming. And he's coming soon. I really believe that any time any day, any moment, Jesus could come. And then, hey, that was some little song we sung part of it. I'm, I'm uh, I got to leave it on my mind. And I saw some of you really singing it all. You know, I do. I think about it a lot of time. I think, you know, what, what am I going to, sometimes I even think, what am I working on this house for? Because I'm going to leave it. But I'm not that attached to it. But then I look at Francis and I know why I'm working on it. And a few things in my mind, I know why I'm working on it. And, all, and, and we're supposed to occupy until he comes. So nothing's wrong with that, okay? You occupy until he comes. We're supposed to. We're not supposed to go off on a mountain and wait for Jesus come and not mix with the community we're in. Jesus told him, get off the mountain and go back down there and occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. I believe children of God ought to be busy. Stay busy. I believe it's important, though, the company you keep. Listen to this now, the, the rest of these verses. For even when we were with you, notice I said command won't go. This we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Now I'm not down on welfare programs when people deserve it. Please know that when I say that. But if there ain't nothing wrong with somebody, and they really don't deserve it, not just go, let me, let me make something clear. You, we can give a lot of things sometimes when maybe we don't deserve it. And I know this won't fill church house up. But I'm telling you, if you're just a, a gimme, 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 I want it all the time just because I can get it, that's not the right spirit, that's not the right attitude. And if ain't nothing wrong with you, and you could get up and go to work, then you ought to get yourself up off of your backside of your lap and get up and go to work like God intended us to do. I got one, two rights. Do I have any amens? I'm talking about if you're able to work. I'm not talking about if you're disabled. I'm not talking about if you're really disabled. I'm not talking about if you're elderly. I'm not talking about if you're retired. I'm not talking about if you've already paid in tons and tons and tons of Social Security. I'm not talking about getting a, a Social Security check or other government help. Please know, I'm not putting everybody in this brand. But if there ain't nothing wrong with you and you're just lazy, and that's one reason you're not blessed too much. That's one reason you've always got a lot of problems. Right. That's one reason you ain't, I'm going to go ahead and say it, and people don't like to hear this, you'll never prosper like God wants you to prosper. Amen. If there ain't nothing wrong with you, and you're just sorry, low down, and lazy. Somebody said, I can't believe you called me sorry, low down, and lazy. You just told that you don't want to work. If you want to work and your heart wants to work, you can't. Look, I know people that would give anything right now. Their heart wants to do all kinds of things, but physically they can't do it. I've got friends like that. Some of y'all here in this church that way, and I understand that. But if somebody, let me tell you something. If somebody is healthy and nothing wrong with them, and they get up at night and rope and stoke and run the roads and look here and look there and go here and go there and drink and carouse and do everything else on the sun and and. And, and be a sperm donor and all kind of other stuff. Let me tell you something. They could get up off of their backside and go to work. God said, if any man won't work, neither should he eat. You know what God said? If anybody won't work, 
You're talking about the ones that could work and all the work. Man, man can't, won't work. Neither should he. God said, you all starve to death. That's pretty tough, ain't it? That's pretty tough. How many of you believe God's word? Word? Now watch this, and I, I gotta quit. He said, we commanded you that if you would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear, listen to this. For we hear, it's up there, that some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies, busy bodies, busy bodies. Do you know what a busy body is? Did anybody know any busy bodies? Busy body, you know what one place says? Busy for us not to be a busy body in other men's matters. Go ahead and tell somebody right now. Say, I wish I hadn't come today. <laughs> and then when they tell you that, if they told you that, say, you must, you must be a busy body <laughs> if you don't want to hear the truth. How many of you know the truth that sets you free? But how many of y'all understand, don't you sometimes get your, can I say your can full of people that's always trying to tell you something, inform you something about somebody else and busybody in other men's matters. Now see, God said he commanded them not to do that. And he said, now them that are such we command and exhort you with Jesus Christ that with the quietness they work and they eat their own bread, see that work for me, earn it. But ye, brethren, be not weary and well doing. And if any man obey, obey not our word by this epistle, see, now I'm going to give people the way out. If any don't obey our word by this epistle, listen to what he said. He said, note that man. And guess what else he said? He said, quit running around with him and quit hanging around with him. He said, quit, don't have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Now, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read one more scripture and I, I just wanna throw this in. I'm, I'm gonna tell you the company that you ought to keep and that you could keep and where you'd be blessed to keep. How many of y'all would like that? And I close out with it, okay? Uh, and I, I'm not near through and I hope to get back down to it in a little bit. Put up Psalms, verse one, uh, Psalm, chapter one, of Psalms, if you can, chapter one of Psalms and verses one. Or you can put them all up there and I'll stop whenever. Now listen to this. Blessed is the man. How many of y'all want to be blessed? Amen. Blessed is the man. Many of you said, note that person that does some of these things. Note them. And he said, don't keep no comfortable. Don't keep no comfortable. And blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. God don't even want you walking and taking counsel with the ungodly. You know, if I was needing an attorney, if I, if, if there was such a thing as a Christian attorney, no, no, I'm telling you. There are some. I think I've met a few in my life. I think I know one that's already gone from this life. And I've had a lot of friends that are attorneys. But I don't know about their salvation necessarily. And I do know what Jesus told the attorneys. He said, you will tax men with heavy burdens which they cannot bear. And then you will not lift one little finger to help them with that burden that you put on them. How many of y'all understand a little bit of what that's talking about? And sometimes that's what some attorneys will do. All in the name of trying to get somebody more money or a bunch of money or get that lawsuit through or whatever. Get to what they owe them or get them the most. You know, one click, that's all. You can call him and you'll get hundreds sometimes. I better shut up. Now, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know who you ought to be drawing your counsel from? It's good Christian men and women brother. Blessed is the man that don't walk in that counsel or go to them or stand in the way of sinners. If you're hanging around with a bunch of folks that are doing things ungodly, sinful things, you stand in that way or sit in the seat of scornful. Did you know that goes back to being a busybody in other men's matters sometime or being a tail there 
you know, we're born, we're school full of people. We, somebody say something good about somebody, say, yeah, but you don't know them like I know them. I know what they did. I know what they did to so-and-so, and I know what they did to so-and-so. Well, you don't even know what they might have done for me that was a blessing to me or whatever, you know. You don't know everything, but another thing, you're being scornful if you don't want to be. Be careful not to be scornful, and be careful not to be a busybody in other men's matters. Be careful not to be a careful. Because Paul said, I command you to get away from it. Stay away from them. And the man is blessed if he don't walk with them, if he don't stand with them, if he don't sit with them, go ahead, watch it. But he's delighting the law of the Lord, talking about the Word of God, his law that he meditate in day and night. That's what he thinks about. What does God's Word have to say on this subject? Go ahead, watch this. And he says this, and I close with it. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in season, his leaves also shall not wither. Listen to this, and whatsoever he doeth 